welcome to another meeting and discussion on what is role of modern dancers and dance in India. Today we talk with Sarkar's Veena Pani Chawla and others. Manjushri Chaki Sarkar was born on 28th August 1934 at Murshidabad. From there she came to Pabna which is now in Bangladesh. She migrated to Calcutta after the partition of India. Her autobiography Nritya Shethe Mama was published in the year 1999. In the centenary celebrations of Bethune College in the year 1949, where she was a student, she danced in the role of Yaksha in Kalidasa's Meghdoot. From 1951 to 53, she was in Presidency College, Calcutta. There, as a student of Bangla literature, she was deeply influenced by the works of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. It was around about this time that she got an opportunity to see the dance of Martha Graham. This was a source of great inspiration to her. In her final year at Presidency College, she came into close contact with Deva Pratad Biswas, famed for his excellent rendition of Robindra Shangeet. He used to sing in a style which was his very own as opposed to the rigid style of music in existence at that time. This inspired her to compose and choreograph dance pieces in her own inimitable style and form to the accompaniment of Biswas's vocal singing. The dance form created by her was later called Navanritya. Some of these inimitable pieces done by the duo are Oi Sundri Mori Mori and Jethe Jethe Ki Pehlapathe. While qualifying for a master's at Calcutta University, she composed a number of dance ballets and took up the lead roles. Between 1953 and 1961, she danced in the role of Shyama in the dance drama of the same name under the direction of Balakrishna Menon. Armed with a Master of Arts degree, she launched on a career of teaching, first as a lecturer in South City and later at Bharanpur College. In 1958, Manjushri married Dr. Prabhati Kumar Shorkar and left the shores of India, where she earned fame as a soloist with the new creations. She earned a doctoral degree in anthropology from the Columbia University. After returning to India in 1980, she choreographed and presented Ruddha Madhur and Meera Nritya Kotha. On 15th August 1983, she established Donshar's Guild along with her daughter Ranjabhati Sharkar to usher in a new age in dance. Donshar's Guild would create a new idiom for modern dance while remaining deeply rooted in the classical dances of India. The name Nobonritya took shape at this point in time. In the year 1994, Manjushri Chauki Sharkar got the Shongit Natak Academy Award. Besides this, she has won the Uday Shankar Award as well as the Shirimoni Award. Her productions such as Sharala Tomari Matir Kanyar based on Chandalika, Toshir Deshe, later renamed Konotantiki Dok, are from the works of Rabindranath Tagore. Among her memorable choreographic books are may mention the Bhadram, Oranya Amrita, Karunacho Kama, and Yugo Shandhi. As the artistic director of Dancers Guild, Manjushri Chaki Shorkar has travelled far and wide with the troupe Mritika an institution of dance designed by her to pursue the fine arts unhindered. She died on 6th of June 2000. In the annals of Indian dance, Uday Shankar the Great inspired many to learn and interpret Indian dances. As his base became Bengal and he lived there for long, it inspired generations of dancers and dance lovers. One such talent that arose in the late 1980s was Manjushri Chaki Sarkar and her daughter Ranjubati. Manjushri began her work in creative dance during her years at Presidency College in Calcutta. She was best known at that time for her involvement, interpretations of the songs, dance dramas and poetry of Rabindranath Tagore which developed entirely outside the parameters of Santiniketan and the traditional Rabindra style, which was a mix of many styles. Gurudev invited many gurus to come stay at Santiniketan, so each brought something to the 
stable as it were. Manipuri gurus brought Manipuri, Kathakali brought traditions of Kerala. Kathak and Bharatanatyam did not reach Santiniketan under Guru Dev's time. Manjushri spent several years in Nigeria and United States and evolved as a soloist presenting innovative work alongside the classical dance from Bharatanatyam, Manipuri and Odissi. She also founded a dance organization in New York with the students. She admitted in Columbia University to study anthropology. Receiving her doctorate there, she began to apply these studies to her work in the form of dance. Since founding Dancers Guild in 1983, she worked with contemporary group reinterpretations of Tagore dance dramas. Due to her extraordinary achievements in the field of dance, she has been awarded the Shiromani Puraskar, the West Bengal State Academy Award, the Uday Shankar Award, and the Sangeet Narak Academy Award. She created new dance vocabulary and direction with her daughter Ranjabati, followed and built upon. Ranjabati Sarkar was born in 1963 on March 24 in Nigeria and grew up in the United States. She graduated from Jadapur University in Kolkata and trained in classical folk dance in India. She sought, however, a creative synthesis of modern dance from the West with classical Indian traditions. She did not only help take to her mother's idea of her Navaritya further. It is not an idea, but style, she insisted. She also balanced and enhanced it with her further explorations in dance. In 1990, she participated in the International Choreographers Workshop of the American Dance Festival in Durham, North Carolina. And in 1992, she founded the South Asian Dance Youth Company, which won her the London Dance and Performance Awards. Ranjobati also had deep concerns for cause of women's rights and feminism and reviewed famous works in New Light. Chitrangada is a good example or Tomar Mati Konya. Caught between the old and the new, the traditional and the contemporary, she established the knowledge is the word of modern Indian dance. The question before its practitioner is what part to take from the old to give it an Indianness and what part from the new to add to it to make it new. Attempts in this genre has gone on for decades, starting with the father figure Uday Shankar, who took the first steps in a frenzy of revivalism and resurgence of Indian arts. She chose one showcase use of chow leg with Bharatanatyam Hasta, Kathakali eyes, Kalari gate to convey a shivering Shiva and frigid frozen love scenes. Her Ganga Avataranam piece at best reflected her use of Navaritya in traditional story and had little freshness to offer, thereby leaving one to ponder what was new about it in terms of treatment, content or form. In the second piece, Fable, there was a freshness in approach, although Ranjabati is more theatre than new dance and she is better narrator than a choreographer. The tale is simple of a beautiful love child whose annihilation by the devil is a return to elements. Although Ranjabatis has a tall physical presence, she lacks a commanding, engaging presence as a soloist. Her dance ability, both in form and in structure, is yet to mellow and reach meaningful or professional artistry. Caught up between the two worlds, her Navaritya shows style, signs of being stillborn. Ranjabati died in 1999, October 24, due to personal reasons. Her mother died soon after, not able to bear the loss. The sudden demise of two left the idea and the form forlorn. A good idea was being formed in modern Indian dance, and the death of daughter, followed by mother, made this form die a premature death. With them gone, the whole movement of search for new direction, the Navanritya floundered, and soon the style and its adherence became part of history. Such is Indian dance history that after a long time, some serious talent comes which understands traditions of East and West, technology and art, form and soul, and tries to merge the three into a seamless work. Navanitya remains an important milestone in annals of Indian dance. Veena Pani Chawla was benchmark in dance theatre. She was unique as trained theatre person. She used dance and thus made lasting impressions through her productions. She had worked as a teacher at Bombay, was a journalist with Times of India, and co-authored a book, Early Indian Political History for Orient Longmen. From 1979, she has devoted her life to theatre, acting, directing, and finally, 
founding her own company, Adi Shakti, in 1984. A greater dawn, impressions of Bhima, so what's new? Khanda Prasada, Agniyahuti are some famous works directed by her, in addition to Savitri and many other productions with Meeta Vashisht. In 1997, she received a one-year grant from IFA for a project, a dialogue between Kuriyatam, Nangyarkut, and contemporary theatre under the Arts Collaboration Program. Brahanala was a result of that collaboration. The process of Veena Pani's work is long drawn, notes her associate Vene Kumar, who is also an eminent actor with Adi Shakti. The germination period is longest, he says. This certain period went up to a year or more since her subject and research and subsequent productions were not a reflection or reaction to the times or to a social reality of that time. Primarily, the concept or the seed idea that was generated by Veena Pani Chavla prior to the start of her new work was always connected to her own philosophical moorings that governed her life and thought processes. It can be cumbersome to even think that the early ideas she generated could even go anywhere near the conceptual level of what we call the traditional notions of theatre, performance, etc. But here she does an amazing diversion that I think has always been complementary to her working processes. Once the seed idea was in her hand, she immediately put her attention to the creation of the physical or oral language of the play that encapsulated the seed idea in terms of aesthetics. Once enough language was there, she was able to play around with images that were created by the physical language that fed back to her seed idea. This visual representation of her idea in a physical form, not in a linear way, rather with very impressionistic visuals, allowed her to make the idea and form to evolve hand in hand from here onwards. So when we talk about working processes of Veena Pani, Chavla, with the idea that the creation of a vocabulary too becomes very important for her, we need to know that it was decades of studying and investigating these processes. And investigation is what finally took the shape into what is now the distinct Adi Shakti training method. Planning a production. That's exactly the point where she did not want to work with the conventional notions of planning and meeting a deadline for the work to be presented. She shifted from Mumbai to Pondicherry so that she could work with actors who were in residence and her work is not centered around just productions but also around the creation of methodology for actor training and an investigation into ancient knowledge systems that can enrich our contemporary lives. And this process demanded an enormous amount of time and patience when she felt that the product had achieved its target in all the above mentioned categories. It was only then that she was ready to open up the work for public performances. But a great length of thought went into identifying resources, gurus, performances, forms, music, puppets, so that the next year we could work closely with that guru to understand his or her form. Teaching, as I mentioned earlier, the methodology created by Veena Pani Nadi Shakti is fast becoming one of the most sought after training methods in India and abroad, clearly from a performer's point of view. She was able to create tools that allow the performer to look at the entire creation of emotions that is vital for any performer in many more different ways. From actors and dancers to management consultants who participate in Nadi Shakti's training programs, they are now applying this set of tools in their respective fields, the tools that create the entire emotional graph using breath, body centers and chakras. Major Productions and Products of Adi Shakti Adi Shakti's second chapter started with Veena Pani attempting to create an impossible production to make a play out of Sri Aurobindo's epic poem Savitri. This was the first major departure she made from her earlier practice of making plays out of pre-written texts 
that were Eurocentric in nature. From Savitri onwards, Veena Pani went on to make seminal and path-breaking productions such as Impressions of Bhima, Brahanala, Khanda Pravasha, Ganapati, The Hare and the Tortoise, and The Tenth Head. All these plays are counted as major influences of the current contemporary theatre and dance in India. Two days before her untimely death, she completed her concept note for a new play called Sita. Her main contribution is creating a methodology of training performers. Takes years and generations to complete. But within 25 years of her work in receipt, she was able to find a perfect performer training method that was contemporary, but at the same time one which had its roots in almost 2,500 years of Indian performance research and history. A lifetime search for a neutral energy creating physical form made her study Kalari Payatu, a martial arts form from Kerala. Her extensive work and its transformation into a performative practice made this form to be accepted by other practitioners of dance, theatre and other discipline. Her vision of a seminal institution that facilitate multidisciplinary dialogue is materialized in the form of Adi Shakti Theatre Lab and performance space in Pondicherry that later became one of the most significant institute of the country. Here, engagement meant with Indian myth that the way she unpacked this myth in the modern realm is unmatched in the performance practice in India. Finally, a creative genius who able to blend her spiritual practice with a creative practice whose importance will be felt in the coming years. Gauri Ramnarayan was born to a family of writers with Kalki being her grandfather and Emma Subalakshmi being her aunt. She learnt dance as most Tamilians do and music came naturally to her. But her flair for writing and literature was inborn. This she became a critic and deputy editor of the Hindu Madras and contributed significantly to arts writing. 2000 onwards she returned to her love of a theatre and has created many dance dramas productions that has dance theatre using Natya Shastrik inputs. Gauri Ramnarayan says, As a student of Kalakshetra, Chennai, I grew up watching the miracle of dancers turning into heroes, villains, gods, demons, clowns and saints. In Rukmini Devi's dance dramas, reliving their epic lives, I realized that theatre can make us grasp matters human and non-human, emotional and ideational in our blood flow and pulse beat. She avers Rukni Devi's work was part of the national renaissance, a search for cultural identity. But when I began my work, India had other needs. We face huge ethical dilemmas in our socio-political and spiritual lives. How does art help us face and resolve those modern day dilemmas? Is art relevant at all in our daily lives? These questions had always troubled me as a writer on the arts and led to the hands-on experiments in theatre and founding just us repertory with like-minded artists. Why theatre? Because it is a composite art form blending both performing and plastic arts. With teamwork as its mantra, theatre is a communal, not a personal experience, not self-indulgent but a socio-spiritual quest. I have used modern techniques to blend drama, poetry, dance, music and visual arts, creating new work that explores the realities of today, as also the staggering weight of historical, political and literary pasts which theatre must engage to represent the complexities of modern existence. In 10 years, Just Us has produced 18 such multi-genre works. It has chosen subjects which interest them to write mostly original scripts, but have also adapted poems and fiction, traditional and folk songs. For example, juxtaposed verses from Vyasa's Mahabharat and Arun Kolatka's long poem, Snake Sacrifice, to create Sarpa Sutra, a dance theatre work where an old myth mirrors today's horrors, terrorisms, ethnic cleansing and environmental depredation. Yashodra looks at the single mother and abandoned wife of Gautam Buddha, who asks, why didn't my husband share his thoughts and explain his mission to me? Making her an artist, a painter, was to empower the woman to find her own insight and liberation. 
Ahimsita, I Sita traces Sita's evolution from a naive ingenue to a mature woman. Each crucial episode introduced by other women in the Ramayana, Ormila, Ahalya, Surpanakha, Mandodri. Each has her own take on Sita, conflicting and contrastive. These multiple perspectives add dimensions to Sita while also giving full scope to both dancer and actor. Fire and Ash recontextualizes a prehistoric icon as a contemporary metaphor through dance, music, verses in six languages and large contemporary paintings commissioned for my work. My focus? Male and female, Shiva unites power with compassion, Parvati. As mountain god, he protects environment, art is sincere, Shiva images creativity as a means of survival and transcendence. The dancers and musicians who work with her are those who enjoy the process, evolve with work and find insights in learning together. I began with big casts and spectacle, but now I trust minimalism and intimacy. I like intriguing props, especially when a bit of cloth, a fan, a flower or a clay lamp launches many meanings. It is presumptuous to say that my work has made a difference. All I can say is that working with a team of artists from many disciplines has made a difference to me. It makes me realize that we have to take individual and collective responsibility for everything that happens in the world. Together we assert our right to question, to justice, to human values and to freedom. To be a theatre artist is to fulfill a major duty. We ask questions, called Gauri Ramnarayan.